and welcome to Rising Match Day this Saturday the 11th of September. I'm Owen Evans, here to preview tonight's game against LA Galaxy 2. Coming up on the show. Two wins on the bounce after a rough few weeks, but what is that doing for morale on the training ground? Some new faces at Wild Horse Pass, what should we expect to see? and a look at the opponents as Rising prepares for its first trip out to LA this year. But first let's look back to last weekend's match in Tacoma. Rising making the trip up to Tacoma the farthest away trip for them within the division. And they get off the mark early, Darren Mattox making his first start, he pounces on the poor pass, shrugs off two defenders and slots it past the goalkeeper to make it 1-0. As you played day for Mattox, he gets his second in due course. Up for a header after Defiance's goalkeeper can't reach the cross. 2-0 to Phoenix thanks to their new centre forward. Tacoma got one back before the break though, Phoenix a little asleep on the free kick, letting Sam Adana run onto the score sheet. After losing Abdullah Sissoko just before half time to a concerning looking neck injury, the last thing Tacoma needed was what would come next. Josh Atencio pulling down Arturo Rodriguez, enough to earn a second yellow card from Michael Radchuk. With the clock running down, a handball call in the box. Apologies that a better angle doesn't exist on this one, but Phoenix given the penalty. Birthday boy Santi Mar steps up to take it, sealing the three points by restoring the lead to two goals. That's how it would finish, a 3-1 score up in Washington, Rising going over to celebrate with the travelling crowd after the final whistle, but here's the reaction from the match. I, boy, I, I think, first of all, Darren Maddox is definitely a difference maker. Uh, extremely explosive, you can see his ability to jump and finish crosses, tenacity, he's still not fully fit, which for us to get him about 85, 90 minutes was unbelievable. Um, you know, he sees the game at, at, at a really, really high level. So we're going to have to get used to playing with him, but I think we're going to see more of that from Darren. Uh, and Santi, you know, our leading goal scorer, gets a, a goal on his birthday. He couldn't ask for more. So I told the guys this is the match where last week was about being warriors and competing. And I knew New Mexico was very good, but I said this is the match where we have to prove to the rest of the league that you know we're back we're a good team we're going to make it difficult for teams to play against and i thought the guys you know it wasn't our best performance but very gutsy very solid performance i, th uh, I think the key was scoring soon 
early and Mr. Darren did that, uh, just that, you know, two goals in the first 20 minutes to put us ahead and, and after that it was just managing the, the game. Uh, we were ahead all the time, so very, very happy with the team performance. And you know, for your own confidence, though, to get two goals on your first start, how big do you think that goal? No, that's very good. You know what I mean? In, Congrats, big man. In, thank you, mate. In the last game, I should have gotten two, you know, so I told myself this time, you know, I got to, I got to get a flight, you know, so when I saw that first one going in the first half, I was like, yes, you know, so hopefully I just keep it going. Uh, I told them today that we showed them the, we showed them the standings, we showed them where we were at, and I said, how badly do you guys want to win? Uh, it, it's just that simple. It's um, you know we had three draws and a, and a loss in, on the bounce, and, and now we've kind of recovered well, um, come to a very difficult. These guys haven't lost here all season, and I told the boys that they're undefeated at home. They're I think from a points per game match they're second, you know. But this is a game that you have to win in order if you want to if you want to be serious about winning trophies. Oddly enough, Rising didn't have the bulk of possession, but Tacoma were unable to do very much with theirs. A rare afternoon game for Rising on a field that Coach Rick Shantz wasn't too keen on, a converted minor league baseball field. Still, Rising coming away from the match with all three points. So that win in Tacoma, making it two on the bounce now for Phoenix, but what kind of a boost does that give the team, having had that poor run just before? Um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times you need those spells just to re-encourage the hunger and the fight and just the desire to make sure that, you know, you give it all on the week to then, you know, perform and, and, and you know, get those results on the weekend, home or away. So, um, I think the, the past two wins have brought a lot of, you know, positivity and, and encouragement to the group to continue to, to have that desire and fight. And I think it's only going to just, you know, push and motivate us more to take each game one at a time and, and continue the streak that we're on. Well, in their last five games, Rising recording only one clean sheet. So what's the emphasis been for the defenders in recent days? I think we do a really good job defensively. And, and, and I think, you know, the thing that we've been pushing for is, you know, continue to score goals, but to keep those shutouts and keep those zeros. Um, so it's just the little details on, you know, set pieces, on transitions, uh, just the communication amongst the group to make sure everyone has each other's backs, uh, talking to each other, um, you know, even to making sure the front guys, you know, have have our press down because it's, it's really not just the the defenders that are keeping the clean sheets or the results. It's, it's the whole collective 11. And I think, you know, as these games continue to go, you know, yeah, we want a clean sheet, but we also know that we're a team that's, very attacking and very, uh, you know, aggressive to score. So even if a team does get one, we're going to continue to get the, you know, the second, the third, the fourth. So, you know, we haven't been able to get as many clean sheets as we wanted to, but, uh, you know, sometimes those need to happen to, you know, re refocus our energy to make sure those little mistakes that we're making or, or, you know, instances where we can learn from to, you know, keep us motivated and pushing to develop and, and continue to learn from you know each and every game that we play. Meanwhile, Rising bolstering its midfield, first with the addition of Luis Manuel Sejas. But what does he bring to the team? Uh, probably any one of the three midfield positions. A player with this type of experience, he, he's really an eight, um, but man, he's, he's super, super technical, very, very clean extremely hard working uh, gonna bring a lot to our locker room if it works out um, and then uh, you know a good mentor I think for Arturo and and help some of the younger guys and he this guy's played in front of a hundred thousand people he scored a goal against Real Madrid he's played in a Sudamericana final and uh, I mean a guy with this type of experience is is very very valuable to us and it'll help our locker room immensely uh, it's still early. I haven't really been able to see Luis, you know, play yet in like on the 11 v 11 games. So it's, it's always hard for a player to really judge another player with just in, you know, the, the few days of training that we've had, but you can see the, the, you know, creativity and, and just talent that he has. And, you know, I think with the transition a player goes through, it always takes time for them to fully, you know, prosper and bring it out, you know, within if it's, you know, 11 11 scrimmage or getting that rhythm and then playing in games, because it always takes time for for players to just get used to other players around them. But you can see the, you know, the confidence and just creativity that man has and, you know, the talent that he's going to continue to 
you know, work on and feed off everyone else to help help our team, you know, going forward. So it's very positive and, and encouraging for us seeing him. Also joining the team, David Loera on loan from Orlando City. But there was one outgoing too. Toby Adewale announced on Wednesday as having left the team. So how have the boys reacted to his departure? Uh, it was unfortunate. I mean, it's one of those things too. It's, it's like we have so many, you know, solid defenders and it's just, there's always going to be one man out. But, you know, him as a person, he, he handed a well of always bringing his best in training. You know, being a positive teammate to all the guys, encouraging one another, being there for, you know, the team. So, you know, it was, it was hard for him to go. But, you know, I think it's probably best for him, you know, to be able to get more minutes on a team. So, you know, we wish him well. But unfortunately, he had to, you know, leave halfway through the year. Well, let's take a look now at the rest of the Pacific Division. We'll start in San Diego, where Loyal took on LA Galaxy 2. Ten minutes in, Elijah Martin finds Augustine Williams with a cross, the latter's header on target to put the hosts up 1-0. Williams would have a role in the next goal too, playing it back across to Corey Herzog who doubled the advantage. Second half, LA Galaxy given a lifeline, Kai Kareniuk bringing it back to 2-1. But the hope didn't last long, Corey Herzog on target again to increase the lead back up to 2. Just over 10 minutes left and the game all but put out of reach by Tumi Mushubani. Remy Cabral scored late for Los Dos but nothing more than a consolation goal as they lose 4-2. On to Vegas, they hosted Sacramento on Sunday, which also featured their infamous helicopter cash drop. The hosts have struggled as of late, but found the lead early, this one bouncing and bouncing in front of goal, eventually poked home so there was no doubt. Lights up 1-0. Took until the second half for another goal, Cameron Iwasa looking to play the ball across, but Frank DeRoma puts it into his own net to bring the scores level. Things would go from bad to worse for Vegas, Luis Felipe hopping on the loose ball and crushing it to give Republic the lead. Just minutes to go and another spectacular goal, this one from Julian Chavez who kills it in from distance, 3 one on the night, that's how it did finish. 1 more game, this one too at Cashman Field, Lights hosting Roots. Only one goal in it in the end, Triora with a terrible pass out of the back. The deflection coming to Johnny Rodriguez who buries to seal the 3 points for Oakland. Well the two losses only cementing Lights' place at the bottom of the table, even further. Roots, would you believe, up to 6th spot, and if they win both games in hand, they'd be just 2 points shy of Orange County. OC didn't play since Sunday, so rising increasing the gap at the top of the division standings. As commented on earlier in the season, the only team further away from 2nd than rising is the side in last place. So a few games today, Sacramento will face El Paso in Texas at 6.30, Orange County hosting lights at 7, and the same time kickoff in Oakland, where Roots are facing San Diego Loyal. We're looking at the top stories for tonight specifically. It's been a while since we've seen Solomon Asante on the field as he recovers from a hamstring injury. But how is his recovery going? He's doing really well. He was in uh, partial training today and uh, progressing uh, extremely fast. I, I think that you know, if this were the playoffs, he'd probably be able to play right now. Um, but the idea is to make sure that we don't have this injury, you know, in the next 11 games so that it impacts the playoffs. And uh, hopefully, we're not sure, but, you know, maybe next week sometime we'll see him on the field. Tonight's opponent, LA Galaxy 2. What should we expect to see out of them? Very good attacking team. They like to shoot. They like to be in 1v1 situations. They like to go forward. Um, I think they've struggled a bit defensively lately, so... 
Uh, for us, it's, it's going to have to be able to take advantage of, of the opportunities that we get um, and, and try to limit their, their chances. I think they've got, you know, Judd is still very, very good forward, and uh, I think it's Picasso or Pizarro, or I can't remember his last name, but he's an awesome player. I really like him. He comes in as a sub generally. Um, they're very, very talented in 1v1 situations, so you have to be extremely disciplined against them. And they're up against it. I think right now they've had a couple tough results, and you never know uh, who we're going to face. I mean, these teams, they could make a change real quick. So um, we'll, hopefully it's the same group, and, and we're prepared uh, to play as well as we did in, in Tacoma. And what's going to be the key for Rising to get a result tonight? I think just continue to do what we do best, you know, not worrying too much about you know, who we are facing, even though this is a very talented and good team. But I think it's, it's we're at that stage now where we continue to focus on what we do best and, and, and keep, you know, finding the, the moments for us to go forward, for us to find guys like Baron, for us to find guys like Arturo, Quint, Asante, Solo, you know, all those guys to find their individual moments to go forward and attack and to, to get us all, like, you know, in form and enjoying the ball. Um, you know, we're a dangerous team. So I think we just got to continue to do what we're doing, be solid defensively, a lot of communication. And, you know, when we go forward with confidence and urgency and, and we're going to create those chances. So I think, you know, doing what we're doing. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Tonight's match, a 7.30pm kickoff at Dignity Health Sports Park's Track and Field Stadium. Make sure to follow me on social media for all the latest happening from inside the ground. Enjoy the match. Goodbye.